parties have stood in the corner and held their breath and waited to get their own way. Both parties have led us to believe that in America, a, a country that was built on compromise, that somehow now compromise is a dirty word. If Washington and Adams and Jefferson believed compromise is a dirty word, we'd still be under the crown of England. I don't know where to start with that one. Uh, welcome to the Molesburg panel. Joining us now is Jessica Tarlov, Democratic political consultant, political strategist, Douglas Show and LLC, and oh, with her liberal-looking glasses on. And Ford O'Connor, O'Con Republican strategist, political analyst, author of Hail Mary, the 10-step playbook for Republican recovery. All right, let me start with you, Ford, and, uh, because um, you know I don't know what history he's, he's, he's talking about. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, in the revolution uh, we compromised with whom, I'm not sure. But also, uh, to blame Republicans and Democrats for the state of affairs in Washington, why the heck isn't he then running as an independent? Well, because you have to understand that this is a 16-person field and oh, how the mighty have fallen for Chris Christie. He's barely at risk of making the debate stage right now. He's ninth in the Real Clear Politics average and, four, and 11th in the Fox poll. And what he's trying to do is tap a strain within the Republican Party that dislikes Washington by playing up his working class roots and his ability to get things done. He's fighting for oxygen and looking for turf in a very competitive primary. Jessica? He's not running as an independent because he's not an independent. I mean, he knows what a great talking point is. I completely agree with what Ford just said about that. You know, I mean, he can't, a third party challenger, I don't think is going to have much luck in 2016, unfortunately. Though I have heard that if Bernie Sanders loses the primary, which I expect that he will, that he might toss his hat in as an independent in the end and just cause some trouble. Um, but Chris Christie, I mean, he's pretty conservative through and through, so it makes sense for him to be in there on that side. Well, he's not really a conservative through and through. I really? live in his state. Uh, I, I, I moderated his final debate for the Republican nomination when he first ran for governor. He started out that way. Uh, he he well, couldn't even he couldn't vote. even he wouldn't even weigh in on the ground zero mosque at the time. Said it wasn't his place when New Jersey lost more people than anybody else. He went on Saturday Night Live three weeks after Sandy after 48 people died in New Jersey and started quoting from Bruce Springsteen. Everyone dies, baby. That's a fact. This guy, this guy's no conservative. See, that, that may all well and be good. This is about presidential strategy right now, okay? And he's trying to fight for anything because if he can't get on that debate stage, his candidacy is sunk. Right. And even if he does get on that debate stage, he has to go and win New Hampshire. He's trying to take a page out of John McCain's 2007 playbook when literally he was living off the land and out of a suitcase with two staffers. Christie is really hosed and he's trying for a Hail Mary. Uh, uh, Jessica, I want to I follow up on something you, you brought up. Where are you hearing that uh, Bernie Sanders uh, might uh, be, a, you know, run as a third party if he doesn't win the nomination? Just from chat with my liberal friends, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a plausible idea, right? I mean, he's growing in the polls. I think he's only eight behind Hillary now in New Hampshire. But, I mean, she's still up 63 to 15 overall. So let's say that she's going to get the nomination uh, for argument's sake. And he has a lot to say. He feels like the Democratic platform, as she would run it, uh, which would be more centrist once we get to the general, isn't meeting the needs of the country. And, you know, I mean, he is an independent. So why wouldn't he? I mean, well, that's for, music to my I ears. was just going to say, yes, Ford, that's the best news I've heard all week. <laughs> that is the best news I've heard all year because the great thing about liberals is they can't do math and you need 270 electoral votes to become the next president of the United States. And if he pulls off 5% in states like Virginia, Florida, and Ohio, guess what? I'm going to be measuring the drapes in the White House because I'm not going to be able to talk to you much longer, Steve. <laughs> 40% of people in America now that are identifying as independents. I mean, I, I'm not saying Bernie Sanders really has a feasible chance, but accusing all liberals of not being able to do math is a nasty. All right, all right, all right, all right. You could do math. You could add two and two and probably more than that, Jessica. We're all coming back. Ford and Jessica and me don't go away. <laughs>
Oh, my God. He, not only is he a reverse bigot, in my view, against religious folks, uh, based on that interview he did today, but Chris Cuomo is either, uh, I don't know, he can't be that ignorant. Uh, welcome back to the Mulsberg panel, Jessica Tarlow, Ford O'Connell. Uh, the representative from the Family Research Council went on to cite a case where uh, a gay couple did exactly that. They recorded the entire conversation from the moment they walked into a bakery or a facility. And, and, and when the guy said, no, we don't, we're not going to do it, they filed charges against them. They took it. So absolutely, Ford, uh, this is going to become more and more of a problem in the aftermath of this gay marriage ruling. But more importantly, perhaps, of course, is the, uh, they're going after and saying religious objectors. Religious, that's the rationale they used when they didn't want blacks to marry whites. You're a bigot. But this is exactly how the mainstream media is acting. They're acting basically just like liberal activist smear merchants. Understand something. The left will not be pacified just with the passage, passage of same-sex marriage. They're hell-bent on, on crushing traditional values and, and replacing them with so-called tolerant policies under the guise of collective social justice. And if you don't agree, you're a bigot. Trust me, what's next is synagogues and churches who refuse to marry yep. same-sex people will have their tax exempt status revoked. Absolutely. Jessica, is that where we're headed? No. I, mean, <laughs> I agree. Wow, that's a reason. You, you, you got a lot of gravitas with that no. <laughs> I mean, what they're protecting, you, I mean, Ford just mentioned traditional values. Marriage is one of those. and. Gay people should have the same rights to marry as straight people. But uh, so I don't really understand your argument. Well, the argument, it, well, that, that aside, that's what five justices said when state after state after state has said no. But that's not the point. The point is now, will we have religious freedom in this country or not? If a priest oh. and a rabbi doesn't want to, don't want to marry a, a gay couple and or preach to their congregation that marriage is between a man and a woman and someone records it, are they now going to lose their tax exempt status? Absolutely. I'm really not sure wait, wait, let, let Jessica go. I'm not sure about that. And You're I, not I, sure I, about it? Then what country are we living in? But, Come on. But, I mean, let me say this, Steve. Within 48 hours of Kennedy's ruling in the same-sex marriage case, the left was already pushing for this on the front page of Time Magazine's website. And not only that, Donald Verrilli, the Solicitor General, brought this up and a lot of the Supreme Court justices said that is a very real possibility. So guess what? Traditional values are gone, and if you disagree with it, guess what? You're basically a bigot. Let me tell you something else. This already happened. Wait, wait, with the Jessica, one sec. Flag. Go ahead, Ford. What? Oh, this already happened with the Confederate flag. Right. It was one thing to pull it down. It should have been pulled down, but now we're going after statues in the capital of Jefferson Davis, which less than one percent of America could point out, calling it racist. Look, our history is not dandelions, but the bottom line is, if you forget who we are and you erase that, we're going to actually. This is how fascism rises. Well, Jessica, I think we should just start our history with Obama because he's the only righteous one, isn't he? Absolutely not. I mean, you guys, I understand it's all part of the fun that you give me a really hard time about my love for Obama. I mean, no, there were great Democratic presidents before him, like Bill Clinton. But, you know, I mean, this is the ruling. This is the way that we're going to have to live. I am not for people who, you know, believe strongly in marriage between a man and a woman being forced to do things that they don't believe in. But I'm also more against discrimination than that. As to Chris Cuomo's point about the bakery thing, I mean, I think that it actually didn't make a ton of sense. Because when you think about where these cases are com coming from, a lot of the times it's places where you don't have a lot of options, right? Like you're not in the middle of New York City where you Wait can minute, go this to- This is in Seattle, uh, Washington, and in California. What are you talking about? This isn't East Texas, for gosh sake. No, I'm talking about issues that have been reading about not these cases specifically, but what's gone on in, in, middle of the, in the middle of the country where people have complained about this. I'm not saying that cases that have gotten to You the mean court. a gay couple can't find a bakery? They can't find a gay, they can't find a gay friendly bakery? There's not some, there's not some mail order bakery or something a push came to shove? Well, Give, why should you have to have a mail order bakery? Because should people have should have religious freedom and not be forced to participate in something that's against their religious beliefs. You're making the you point of Ford, and you're making my point. We're going to be living in a country where religion be damned, and we're going to be forced to do what we go, don't believe in doing. And not to mention, we're going to have a First Amendment protection overrun by the left because they don't care about what laws they overrun and who they trample because it's all about the collective social justice as I see it right now. And Steve, forget the baker. We're going to have a synagogue and churches and Catholic charities yep. and a whole bunch of other things ripped down. This isn't going to stop with a baker. Nope. This isn't going to be just a florist. They are done and they want to get rid of everything because guess what? It's just not compassion. Well, give it to Barack Obama. 
He, he ran on fundamentally changing America, which he considered to be, uh, in my view, a not good place at all. His wife called it a downright mean nation, and he is doing just that. Ford and Jessica, thank you. Jonathan Gilliam is next. Don't go away.